Good morning, or well, it's 11.38, uh, and welcome to another video. Um, if you watched part one and two, you know I drove with a trailer back and forth Stockholm and then down to the southern parts um, from Oslo. Uh, now I filled up the car to the brim with uh, stuff. I know it's not safe, but I didn't really have an option. Uh, the roof box is filled on top, and we have two bikes uh, on the tow hitch. So uh, we're gonna drive a bit of a different route. I need to go to Norrköping to pick up uh, some Wi-Fi stuff and a router that I ordered since we had fiber uh, installed at the cabin. Uh, so heading there, sadly the first stop will be in Kristina Hamn with 29% because there are no other chargers, oops, there are no other uh, chargers in between. I actually thought there was one in Örebro, uh, actually. Does it say we can reach Norrköping? Let's see. And remove charging stops. Let's see what it says. It's only 256 kilometers. That should be fine. No, 428. We'll give that a try. See what the estimation does. I think it's still kind of rolling on the, uh, the previous uh, trip. I reset this one already. Um, with the trailer and everything. So we'll see what our consumption looks like. Um, I'm just gonna stay right on the speed limit and stay far away from other cars and take it slow and easy just because I have so much stuff in and on the car. So uh, I tried to get a coffee here, but they were out of lids. So I need to find somewhere else to put the coffee in there. Um, all right, I need to start driving. So <laughs> see you on the road. So I did something I normally never do. I uh, stopped the charge at 87% uh, just because I wanted a coffee and a baguette and to see if I can get enough juice to make it to Norrköping. And also to just check the straps and everything, make sure everything is secured properly. So uh, I'm just gonna be here another minute and then I'm gonna get back on the road. So the store I'm going to closes at 5. The car claims a 5.11 arrival. Uh, we can probably shave off 10 minutes maybe on the charging session in Kristinehamn. I'm just literally going to charge up enough to uh, make it to, uh, to the store. And then there's a supercharger nearby in Norrköping. So uh, I'll be fine doing that. Now, the problem is we're in Norway still. And people like to drive below the speed limit. And this, uh, there's a Nissan Leaf far in the front there. That's been um, going down to 70, up to 90, down to 70, back to 80, and doing all kinds of stuff. So as soon as we get past this, these type of drivers, and hopefully there is no border control right now, uh, we should make it with like five, maybe 10 minute margin. And my initial plan was to just uh, go slow and steady, you know, stick to the speed limit, but we're probably gonna uh, do as Bjorn says, add some BAT to the speed limit. We still have some of those fall colors, uh, but now, you know, you see more and more of the wintry trees, the pine trees, or whatever they're called in English. Uh, no rain today, I haven't checked the wind, but uh, I think we will we'll have decent driving conditions all the way, uh, around, you know, seven degrees or so. Um, we're gonna hit some darkness later as well, and I'm excited because uh, first of all, I've adjusted my headlights uh, according to a guide. I did that before I loaded up the car uh, so heavily, so uh, we might get blinked at and need to stop and adjust the headlights when, when darkness hits. I have tape with me so I can mark it on a wall and just uh, lower. And I've installed a LED bar, uh, a laser linear 18 Elite at Bill Componenter uh, in just outside of Oslo in Klöfta. If you watch Björn, that's where he does his uh, zero mile, uh, or zero, what do you call it? Zero percent tests and everything. Um, and I'm really excited to try it out because I haven't. I've just been packing and cleaning and moving and doing all of those things. Uh, so I haven't really been out driving at night yet. Uh, so very interested to see both uh, how much better the, the normal headlights will be when you don't have the brights on. Uh, but even more excited to see the performance of the, the laser LED bar, especially when I get out to the countryside where it's just pitch dark and fields for, for miles. Um, that's it for now, so 
estimated 20% arrival at Christina Hamn and now we can finally pass this car so I'm gonna put the phone away. See you later. This fog is pretty insane. It's been like this for probably half an hour at least. Good thing though is that autopilot doesn't seem to care, so it doesn't get affected by uh, by the by the fog. Um, and it's time to pass some cars. So talk to you later. We look at the sign here. <laughs> That's my half light. So we really need to adjust the headlights before darkness comes. You see that one? Uh, it's getting lit up by me. Uh, so, uh, mm, not the smartest move to adjust the headlights before I had fully loaded the car. And I saw when I was charging that the, the rear end, the rear axle was really compressed, so it's sitting really low. Um, which is not surprising because I'm carrying a lot of cargo. So, since it's a race against the clock, a little bit, uh, we're just 11 minutes away from Christina, the supercharger there. We're going to top up as little as possible. Uh, after kind of initial adjustments, I think the trip planner is doing uh, pretty good. Um, and then once we've picked up the thing at the store in Norrköping, uh, I'll find a place in the parking spot to, to adjust the headlights. Car is preconditioning, uh, and once we're stopped, uh, we're gonna have a look at the trip data because it shows you now uh, how much energy it spends on uh, preparing the battery. So uh, we'll have a look at that for those very short minutes we'll stay in, in Christina Hall. Okay, we started charging in Christina Hall. And it's pretty funny, last time I was here, last weekend, uh, there were several non-trailer cars blocking the, the trailer-friendly stalls. Now there is a fossil Volvo with a trailer blocking non-trailer stalls. Ha! Huh. How things change. Uh, so we're gonna wrap up. We need to check real quick. So, um, ba -ba -ba, okay. We want to make it to Shell Company. And let's see, how close is that to the charger? Okay, so we actually passed the charger on the way there. That's fine. Um, but that just, that just means we need a few extra percent. I think we're, I'm gonna be looking for. Uh, <laughs> We're gonna take up some with speed, so maybe 8% uh, estimated arrival or something like that. Uh, then we should be fine. So, oh come on, give me an estimate. Anywho, here's from this trip, uh, plus 20% for driving, what? Okay, um, because it initially estimated the 29% arrival. Uh, claims we took, uh, yeah, so staying below 110 km per hour would have saved 1.1%, that's not much. Uh, battery conditioning 4.6%, but versus the projection, okay, it used less. Oh, I see how this works now. I haven't looked too closely at this one yet. Anywho, we'll see, okay, oh wow, minus 24, really? Maybe we won't make it? We'll make it, it's fine. So, uh, if we just have a look at the trip so far, uh, since last charge was just, we charged up like, oops, uh, we charged up one or two percent uh, in, uh, I don't even remember the name anymore, um, but the total trip, I haven't renamed it yet, it's still called Stockholm, we drove 260 kilometers, 260 watt hours per kilometer. We started with 100%, huge thanks to my neighbor who let me charge on his charger so that I could be close to my apartment as I was running in and out and still know that I would have 100% in the morning. Yeah, I mean, I guess we'll just sit around here for a bit. 216 kilowatts, I was probably hoping for more. Um, and, ah, I'm just gonna 
and curious sometimes when you re navigate it makes a new um, a new estimate so let's see anyway we've been charging for like three minutes uh, minus 25 now wow okay it got worse that's not good all right catch you back on the road I'll let you know when we leave it's 1436 right now uh, I don't know how long this will take 10 minutes maybe uh, because it says 15 and the Tesla usually charged to have a 20% buffer, right? Or is it 15? I'm not even sure. Alright, I'm gonna stop rambling. Bye. Okay, it's quite a few hours later. Sorry, I was uh, on the phone a lot. Uh, we just came to Norrköping and started charging. Um, I didn't make it in time for the original store and original pickup, uh, but luckily one of their sibling stores had it in stock all of a sudden so I could swing by there and they were open till 6 so just picked it up it's 12 minutes past 5 uh, I stopped at some point to adjust the headlights as well because it was getting too dark to not have them on on I was blinding everyone so I had them off uh, for quite some time now I'm gonna find some place to eat there seems to be a McDonald's behind me uh, I guess that's the dinner today otherwise we just have a bunch of stores that are probably closed because it's Sunday um, all right, we're just going to charge up here enough to make it to the cabin. This is going to be the last charging stop. Uh, and then we have the, the charger over at the cabin. Uh, so, yeah, Oof, I'm getting tired. <laughs> so let's get some food in me, some juice in the car, and I'll see you back on the road. We were done charging probably like 20 minutes ago, 15, 20 minutes ago. I just had some McDonald's right there and as far as mcdonald's goes not bad but still not the biggest fan i prefer chop chop or max or you know preferably bring your own food and uh, put it out on a on a burner and and cook it on the side of the road but who has time for that when your car is full to the limit there we have the wi-fi at least uh, i'm gonna install that tomorrow uh it's time to go the car estimates an 18 percent arrival i just removed the address uh but uh it's gonna hop on the road, it's probably another, I don't know, hour and a half? Not really sure. So um, I'm gonna to try to be better at filming on this leg uh, and show you the differences between the low beam, high beam, and especially with the lead bar uh, to see what that's like. <clears throat> so um, got some coke still here, Swedish snooze of course. So let's hit the road and put our seat belts on. Okay, bye. All right, we're on dark roads, uh, low beam, high beam, with lead bar. I think mine is pointed too much to the ground, so I'm gonna have to call them tomorrow and, and see if, if it's supposed to hit the ground that much, because I feel like uh, it should be angled up a bit more. You can see how it's kind of not focusing too much straight ahead. And I think the iPhone here is gonna fool you because it auto-adjusts exposure, uh, but I can assure you, I see a lot more to the sides especially and depth wise so there we go there we go uh, i'm not looking at the screen so i have no idea what it looks like uh, but uh, there you have it i'll make a more thorough comparison some other day when, where i go out and find the dark spot and actually lock exposure and everything so you can see the actual differences uh, but uh, i tried turning the, the led bar off and comparing with the built-in high beams and this is just awesome to have uh, especially when you drive in places like this where it's it's very dark a uh, bunch of like farmland on both sides uh, so the risk for animals is pretty high and i have good peripheral vision to the sides here uh, so it helps a lot the only thing you know it's it's mounted very low it's below the, uh, the registration plate so it doesn't you see all the shadows that it casts from from the grass on the side of the road i wish it I mean, you know, it would be optimal to have it on the roof or something, but for aerodynamics uh, and convenience, I think I think this is great, truly. I'm so happy that I put the LED bar on it, especially when I'm going to live out here <laughs> in the middle of nowhere for a few months. Um, yeah, that's it. We were just uh, three minutes away, so this is going to be the last clip for this entire road trip. Uh, I have lots of unpacking to do. I'm going to see if there are any stores open nearby so I can... Uh, drive off and grab some some breakfast and some other stuff 
probably not. Uh, so uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna unpack as much as I have energy for, and then I'm just gonna go to bed because I'm already ready to sleep. So um, truly, thanks for watching. If you made it this far, this is part three. I don't know how long the videos are gonna be, but uh, I've driven a lot uh, this weekend and the past weekend. And I'm really happy that I'm finally done. I moved out of the apartment. All the stuff are where they're supposed to be. Not really. Most of the stuff is where it's supposed to be. But I'm going to have to drive a bit back and forth to Stockholm uh, with a few different things to make sure that they uh, are where they're supposed to or where they're destined to be. Um, but uh, I'll see you in future videos. Uh, and, you know, not to tease too much, but to put some pressure on myself. I'm gonna make a review of the Colix Aero Loader, the aerodynamic roof box I have, uh, the LED bar of course, uh, and I have some other accessories I've installed uh, since last weekend. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, I hope I can find a rhythm of posting, because I enjoy doing videos, I just, uh, you know, don't like too much to be on camera. And editing used to be part of my job, so uh, I'm trying to uh, keep it a bit limited. It's actually the next day. Um, I filmed the ending you're about to see, I filmed yesterday. I was really tired and now I'm out driving again, picking up a desk. But I realized I forgot to sum up the trip, I think. I don't really remember, to be honest. So here we have it, the one that says Stockholm. Uh, we drove a total of 584-ish. Uh, I've been driving a little bit since I arrived. 203 watt hours per kilometer um, with the bike rack and uh, roof box. Um, yeah, I just wanted to let you know, because stats are interesting. Okay. Anywho, enough rambling. Uh, wherever you are, I hope you have a good rest of your day. Thanks for watching. Bye.